Hey there Stampers! So today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little box. It's about a 3x3 three three box and it's about, I don't know, an inch, yeah, it's an inch high. Um, and it's really, really simple. Um, you can put little 3x3 three three cards in here, or you can uh, put a little treat in here. You can also add some little tags, so I'll show you what I've got to put inside afterwards. Okay, so we are starting with, um, well first of all, let's talk about what we're using. We are using the Carols of Christmas stamp set. Um, this is available in a bundle as well. Um, when you combine the bundle, it just offers so much versatility, it's incredible. So it's bundled with the Card Front Builder Thinlets right now, and it is available this month um, and will carry over and be available in the 2017 Holiday Catalog. All right, but for today, I am just focusing on the stamp set. Okay. All right, so what we are starting with is a piece of cardstock that measures five and one eighth inch by nine and a quarter inches. Okay, and I'm using red for this one. And I'm gonna open this up. Okay, and we're gonna do some scoring. So if you've got this paper cutter, you know that the dark gray one cuts, so I'm gonna slide that out of the way. And what I'm gonna do is a long the short side, I'm going to measure one inch and I'm going to score all the way down. And then I'm going to flip it around and measure one inch from the other side and score it. Now I'm going to rotate it a quarter of a turn and I'm going to score at one inch. I'm going to score at four and an eighth. And I'm going to score at five and one eighth. And then the last score line will be, score mark will be eight and one quarter inches. Okay, so we'll move this out of the way. And then the other thing that I want to do is I want to, sorry, I'm just grabbing, grabbing a circle punch because I want to notch it. So I think I used the one and a quarter inch circle punch here which is in one of my bins for a class for tomorrow night. So I just grabbed the one and a half inch. It doesn't matter what size. You just wanna create a little notch because it helps make it a little bit easier to open. Okay, and it doesn't matter what side because these all, this, this side measures one inch and this side measures, measures one inch. So it doesn't matter. You can use either side for your lid. Okay, and then the other thing that you want to do, the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna snip up each one of these to the score line. And what I like to do is I like to, hopefully you guys can see this, I like to kind of trim a little bit like that. So it's a little thicker on this side and then it gets narrower towards the score line. And that just kind of reduces a little bit of the bulk. Okay, and you wanna do that on all of these and then all this side as well, so that it looks like this. All right, and then we're gonna fold along the score lines, and I'm just gonna grab my bulk folder here. Okay, so you wanna make, the, make sure these are nice and crisp. And then going this way as well. And then you're gonna put adhesive. Oh, I didn't notch this box. We'll do that in a minute here. And it's easier to notch the box before you assemble it. So that's why I mentioned to do it before you snip. Okay, so we'll just notch that. So that'll be my lid. Okay, so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put adhesive on all of these little pieces and um, fast fuse works great. You could use tear and tape or if you've got sticky strip, just any kind of stronger adhesive so your box doesn't pop apart. Okay, so then these, this is going to go in like this. And then the same on this side. And then these ones, so that's going to be your top. So you want to attach these flaps to the bottom of your box. 
All right, so only one set of flaps get attached, it gets attached to the top, the lid of your box. Like that. And then these flaps go in here and get attached to this. And then your box is done. So then you just fold it down and it's as simple as that. But I wanna show you something else as well. Okay, so I wanted to show you a little trick. Um, if you've got a stamp that you are inking in a color, the majority of it in one color, and you just want to have a little piece of another in another color, you can, you can for sure, you can use your markers. But I find when it's a larger surface that you're coloring with your marker, sometimes you get those streak marks and um, it doesn't always look as nice. So what I like to do is I'm just going to get some scrap paper in here and I've got a blender pen and what I want to do is I want to make sure my blender pen is clean so there's no ink on it or no remaining color from the last color that I used and I'm going to ink it. This is the deck the halls image. I'm going to ink it in Island Indigo. That looks pretty good and then I'm going to take my blender pen and remove the ink from the, and this is a dark color, so sometimes it takes it a bit to remove it, to remove all the ink. So I'll just keep running it on my scrap paper until most of the ink is gone and then I'll go back over it again. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with my Lemon Lime Twist marker and just color the word the. And then I'll stamp it down. And there we go. So it still allows the, the deck, the halls, to be a nice crisp image. Um, and then you still get the two-toned look. All right, and then what I did was I mounted that to a piece of Lemon Lime Twist. I think the white measures two and a half by two and three quarters, and then the Lemon Lime Twist measures two and five-eighths by two and seven-eighths. And then this is going to go on here with dimensionals. Here's another little trick. My full size dimensionals I always cut in half. The dimensional sticks so well that you don't need a whole dimensional. Half of a dimensional will work just fine. And like I, I've said before, if you've watched some of my videos, I'm kind of a frugal stamper. So I like to stretch my supplies if I can. All right, so there's the box, and now I've got, I believe it's about a four inch piece of the mini sequence in silver, and I'm just cutting a piece of white baker's twine, and I'm just gonna lay this in here and tie a bow. Oops. just a regular bow and then I'm going to use a mini glue dot and I've got lots of these left over from a past paper pumpkin kit so I'm trying to use them up so I'm just going to put a mini glue dot there peel off the backing and then add my bow on here trim these up a little bit when you trim these off these are perfect to keep you can take them off of the the thread that they're on and then you can use them individually on your projects and then just trim up the the tails of my bow and there we go super super cute 
So in this one, what I plan on doing, I have a class tomorrow night, a Christmas class, and we are making, let's move this scrap paper out of the way, we are making some little cards to go inside of it so that we can use it as a little gift. So these would be super cute. There's lots of room left in the box so you can add some treats or whatever in there, but I thought if we make, um, if you make two of each of them and put them in there, that'd be a nice little gift. A hostess gift or whatever. Neighbor gift, coworker gift. And they're really, really cute, easy to make. You could whip these up in no time at all. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, if you're looking for more inspiration, feel free to visit my blog at stampedtreasures.com. Bye-bye.